All right, welcome everybody. I see there's almost half of the people in that registered. We're gonna get started in just a few minutes. Okay, well, I think it's safe to start. So, aloha everyone and welcome to the Hawaii RRC Pauhana event with Chef Grant Sato. Uh, before we start, I do wanna ask everyone to keep their uh, microphones on mute, please. So there's uh, minimal disruptions during our presentation. Um, we'd, last, we'd like to first thank our sponsors, First American Title and Guaranteed Rate. Without them, we wouldn't be able to put on these wonderful events and we appreciate their support as always, um, throughout the years of CRS and RRC, uh, please, if you have a chance, be sure to give them an opportunity to work with you and your clients, uh, and you'll be hearing from them after the cooking demonstration. So now we're gonna transition into the kitchen of the Culinary Institute of the Pacific on Diamond Head Road, where Chef Grant Sato will be doing our cooking demonstration. I'm here to welcome and introduce Chef Grant Sato will be Raymond Kang. Raymond? Hi there. Oh. Hmm? In the wrong spot. Hi. Wrong screen. There you go. Thank you, Aaron. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Raymond Kang, and I'm here to introduce Chef Grant Sato. He is a proud graduate of KCC Culinary and Pastry Arts Program. He has multiple gold and silver medalists as a student and professional at multiple American Culinary Federation competition in the US. He is a chef instructor at the Papiolani Community College since 1998. He is a Francis Davis Award winner for excellence in undergraduate teaching in the UH system. He purchased the KCC's regional and the national champion culinary competition team. He is the host and co-executive producer of What's Cooking Hawaii TV show. He is the author of the Okinawan Kitchen Cookbook and contributor to many locally produced cookbooks. He is a chef consultant for KTA Superstore on the Big Island and a 2015 winner of the International Global Taste of Korea competition. And lastly, he's a lover of everything beautiful and dangerous. What an impressive credentials. Chef will be making today eggplant stuffed mapo tofu and Okinawa ohagi. If you have any questions for the chef, please type it in the chat box. Without further ado, I'll hand the floor over to Gresh Grand Sutter. Aloha, hi everyone. Welcome to the cooking demo. The first dish that we're gonna uh, start off with today is going to be our Okinawan sweet potato ohagi. And the backstory to this dish is that um, I was lucky enough to be raised uh, by my Okinawan grandparents. And my grandmother told me that when I was young, I had an affinity for mochi. So anytime we had mochi, I'd be ravenous and eat all the mochi that was there. Uh, and then of course, um, as I got a little older, that affinity turned to ohagi. And of course, ohagi is a Japanese dessert that's made with mochi rice on the inside and it's covered with ang or red bean paste on the outside. And you know, back in the days, my grandma told me that the red bean paste was very expensive. So in order to make it a little more affordable for me to eat this uh, ohagi as often as I wanted to, uh, she went ahead and she um, started to grow Okinawa sweet potatoes in the backyard. And so she started to harvest the potatoes and came up with the idea of cutting down the amount of uh, zuki bean paste that we'd be using by uh, mixing uh, Okinawa sweet potato with the zuki bean paste to make this ohagi. So uh, fast forward, this, this is going to be the dish that I'll be preparing for you today. So if you receive the box of the pre-manufactured items, this is how they work. When you open up your kit, there's going to be uh, already pre-cooked Okinawan sweet potato in uh, saran wrap. And this Okinawan sweet potato here has been boiled in water for about 45 minutes. You put it into cold water 
uh, bring the uh, water to a boil. Once it goes about 45 minutes, I stick a small little paring knife into the center of the potato. If the knife slips out cleanly, the potato is cooked all the way through, put into a bowl of ice water to stop the cooking and then simply peel the potato. You could do the same if you wanted to steam it in a steamer or wrap the potato in foil and bake it in the oven. Just know that anytime you bake items in the oven, even though they're wrapped with foil, the potato will be a little drier, not as moist as if it was steamed or boiled. So I have that already peeled for you in saran wrap. I also have a mixture here. This mixture here, uh, according to your recipe, is already cooked. This is a mixture of 50% mochi rice, which is glutinous rice, and 50% cow roast rice. So basically what I did is I took the uh, mochi rice, soaked it in water, one uh, half cup of mochi rice, one cup of water. We went ahead and then um, placed the mochi rice and the soaking liquid into our rice cooker, added a half cup of cow roast rice, basically press cook. When the rice cooker is done, open the rice cooker, sprinkle in about a tablespoon of sugar, folded it together, and then basically portioned out. So you're going to get a portion uh, piece of this already pre-cooked mochi rice. And then in the little container here is already going to be the pre-portioned amount of the subushiang. And subushiang is our red bean or azuki bean paste that still has some of the beans in its whole shape. It's not completely uh, mashed like you would uh, with the koshia. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is you're going to uh, open the lid off of your container. We're going to go ahead and take the uh, Okinawan sea potato and the rice that's been saran wrapped out of the bowl. We're going to throw it into the microwave for 30 seconds just to lightly reheat it since it's been in the refrigerator all this time. And this is just going to get it a little softer. As you know, when rice goes into the refrigerator, it can get a little hard. So this is just going to be heated up slightly just so it's nice and pliable. Um, and we can work with it. So while that's going, um, when we mix the Okinawa sweet potato and the azuki bean, um, you can either use a wooden spoon to mash the potato, you could use a wire a whip or a whisk if you like, or you could use your bare hands. Because this is technically a ready to eat food, we always like to have gloves uh, covering our hands just to ensure that we don't cross contaminate the product. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and take out the potato. Uh, again, this is not hot. It's just been in there for about 30 seconds just to get it closer to room temperature since this is already pre-cooked and in your refrigerator unit, okay? So once it's open, you can then go ahead and simply just mash it with your hands. It should be soft enough. Or again, you can go ahead and use a, a wire whisk or a spoon. Once the potato is mashed in the bowl, we're gonna go ahead and take your azuki bean paste. We're gonna take it out of our container, mix it right into the bowl and we're going to mash this azuki bean and sweet potato mix. Now if you really want to mix well you can actually go ahead and mash it until they're completely mixed or if you still want to see chunks of purple Okinawa sweet potato you can go ahead and just lightly mash it as well. Okay. Now once we're done we're going to go ahead and we're going to get a piece of saran wrap And we're going to take one third of the amount of this sweet potato and azuki bean mix, place it right onto the saran wrap. And we wanna go ahead and place it into, or form it into this nice circle shape patty. So you're gonna go ahead and do three of these uh, with your mixture. Once all three are done, we can then go ahead and take out your rice mixture from the microwave. And again, this should not be hot, but it should be nice and pliable. You're gonna divide your rice mixture into thirds. Okay, so one third, you take a nice ball of the rice, place it right in the center there. And once that's done, we can then go ahead and lift up the sides of the saran wrap and gently mold the azuki paste all around the rice. Okay. And we wanna make this into a nice rounded shape. Of course, once this is done, if you're gonna take this to a party, you can go ahead and wrap it and place it in one of your cupcake, uh, excuse me, cupcake 
uh, foil containers. Or if you're gonna serve this at a nice dinner party, you can have a plate like I have here. I've got a nice little tea leaf. All you're gonna do is open up the saran wrap, go ahead and place the ohagi directly onto your plate, remove the saran wrap, and there you go. You have your Okinawan sweet potato ohagi. Again, a mixture of cooked Okinawan sweet potato, uh, tsubushi ang, or the red bean paste um, that still has some whole beans in it. And again, the rice on the inside is an equal portion of mochi rice and cowrose rice cooked with a little sugar folded in. Any questions? I'm just so far. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we're going to transition a little uh, because the next one we're going to do is going to be our marble tofu. So we're going to uh, exchange our cameras and we'll be right back with that next dish. Okay, so some of you um, have ordered either par cooked or fully cooked, regardless of either one. All of the eggplant has already been fully cooked and prepared for you. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna give you a quick demonstration now on how we actually went ahead and pre-prepared the eggplant for you. So we're gonna take our long eggplant here. And again, this is uh, the purple variety, but you can use the green variety, white variety, whichever one you have uh, access to. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly peel the skin off of the eggplant. Now the skin of the eggplant does have nut uh, nutritional value, but because it is very fibrous, uh, it's not very palatable. So we like to remove it. Once you've removed all of the skin, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take a saute pan here. We're gonna turn it on. We're going to add some oil into the pan, and this is the salad oil here. You could use like corn oil, mozzarella oil. Um, if you don't have a peanut allergy, peanut oil would be fine. And we want to coat the bottom of the pan nicely with this oil, about three tablespoons. We're going to go ahead and put the eggplant into the pan. And what we want to do is we just want to wait until the eggplant starts bubbling on the edges that's touching the pan. Recording in progress. We're going to go ahead and start turning the eggplant. Okay, so we can see here that the eggplant is now starting to bubble on the side. We want to let it sit about 30 seconds just to sear the outside. Then we can go ahead and start moving the eggplant. And what you're going to notice is that as the eggplant sears and cooks, not only does it turn beautifully bright green, but it's also going to get this nice golden uh, brown singe to it as well. We're going to just keep turning this here. And what we want to do is we want to wait until all sides of the eggplant have gotten the beautiful bright emerald green and with a, a slightly golden brown tinge to it. Okay. Now that we're getting close, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the fire very low. We're going to take a mixture and the mixture that we have for you here today is your dashi. So we have one cup of dashi which is a Japanese soup top. We've added a teaspoon, or excuse me, one tablespoon of sugar and one tablespoon of soy sauce. Very carefully, we're gonna lid the pan so that the oil doesn't splatter. We're gonna go ahead and add in the liquid. As you can see, it's starting to just simmer. We're gonna put a lid on this and we're gonna simmer this for about five minutes, turning once. And then we'll have our fully cooked eggplant, which you already have in your packet. So whether it's par cooked or fully cooked, all the eggplants are done in this manner. Now let's go ahead to your mako portion. 
So in your box here, we're going to open it up. We have two containers. For those of you who have a fully cooked box, just hold on. Once we cook the filling here, we can get to the point where you're ready to go. So for those of you who have par cooked, we have uh, saran wrapped ground pork in this container here. Beneath the ground pork, you're gonna have some uh, already diced tofu, some uh, peas and some corn. Yes, question. Yeah, the kind of oil that you're using. Yes, so I'm using uh, just a regular salad oil. It's also called vegetable oil. So cor uh, canola oil, mazola oil, um, just not one of your extra virgin olive oils. The extra virgin olive oil has a lot of um, vegetable starches in it. So it'll tend to burn if, it, if you're using a higher heat. So just, just uh, any other vegetable oil. We prefer it in cooking because the vegetable oil is odorless, colorless, and flavorless. So it won't impart its own flavor onto the eggplant itself. Um, I think your mic is on mute, Christina. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay, so again, the components uh, in your box. You have one sauce container. And again, these are for those who ordered the boxes partially cooked. We have your sweet soy, oyster sauce, chili sauce, black bean paste, chopped garlic, and white uh, ground white pepper. The other container has your diced tofu, your peas and your corn, and you have a saran wrap portion of ground pork. So we're gonna go ahead and take our pan here. We're gonna lightly add a little oil. Not too much oil because there's already a lot of um, uh, fat here in the ground pork. We're going to add the pork to the pan, and we're just going to go ahead and lightly smash it down just to start breaking it up. Now, it's important to note that on this uh, cooking of this mako portion here, it's better to stay on a lower to medium heat than on super high heat. If you go too high too fast, what's going to happen is you're going to find that things are going to burn and the volume of liquid that you have is going to uh, reduce greatly. So we want to ensure that we have it on lower temperature here. Now we don't want to cook the pork completely all the way through. We just want to go ahead and cook it until all of the meat has turned from pink to a beautiful gray. So when we're halfway there, when half of the pork in your pan here has already turned gray, we're going to go ahead and add in all of the items from your sauce container. Okay, I'm gonna turn the heat a little higher. And then now we're gonna go ahead and add in your tofu, your peas and your corn. And the tofu peas and corn will release liquid into the pan as well. So this is what's gonna help you to give you more of that liquid to form the sauce for your mako portion here. Okay, so once we get all the pork nice and golden brown, we can turn off the heat and we're ready to go. And I really wish we had smell of vision because this smells so good. Okay, and basically we're done. Now, those of you who ordered the pre-cooked uh, mapo eggplant in your container, you have one container of this already pre-cooked mixture and you have your eggplant itself. Okay. Now, if you wanted to reheat this dish in your a uh, microwavable container here. What I would suggest is that you take your eggplant, go ahead and take a knife, 
You can split the eggplant open. When you split it open, I recommend that you cut it in half, but not all the way, just so you open the eggplant there. Once you open the eggplant, you can then go ahead and take your mapo mixture, place it into the eggplant, and then we can go ahead and place it in the microwave. Now, for those of you who have the fully cooked uh, mapo portion, you don't have to reheat the mapo portion. You can just go ahead and take it out of the container, already um, cold, place it into the split eggplant, and then place this con uh, container into the microwave for about a minute and 30 seconds, okay? So that will not only heat up the eggplant, but it'll also heat up the mapo portion. And then what that's that is going to do is that when it's in the microwave, it's not only gonna heat, but you're gonna get all of the sauce from the mapo to seep down into the eggplant. So it'll flavor the eggplant as well. So you can either do in this microwavable container, minute and 30 seconds in the microwave, or if you want it a little fancy, I've already made another one for you here. You can go ahead and put it on a nice piece of china, split the eggplant open, put the cold mapo mixture in there. And again, we're gonna go ahead and put it in a microwave for a minute and 30 seconds. Any questions? So one of the um, reasons why I came up with this dish is that, you know, as a child, I never really cared for eggplant. No matter how it was cooked, I just couldn't quite pull myself to enjoy it. As I got older though, and I learned how to properly cook eggplant, um, I started to enjoy it more. And when I actually had this dish, I really fell in love with eggplant. And it's because before, prior to this, the eggplant that I had was either just sliced and sauteed or it's sliced and stuffed or uh, battered and fried. And it really wasn't as juicy or flavorful as I thought it should be. So using this method of actually sauteing it after it's skinned and then going ahead and simmering it in that dashi shoyu and sugar, it actually gives the eggplant a really soft texture. So no matter what you do with it after that, you can go ahead and enjoy it that way. So I really love it in this presentation. I also love this eggplant. If it wasn't stuffed with mapo, I like to have this eggplant done the same way, but instead of split open, I'll cut it into chunks and then use that in a tofu salad. So you have this beautifully marinated cooked eggplant uh, in a cold tofu salad. So you get the savoriness of the eggplant matched with the tofu and all your other garnishes put together. So after our microwave oven, our mapo dish here is nice and steaming. And this is your finished mapo stuffed eggplant either microwaved in your container or partially cooked and finished in your container or already pre-cooked for you, just microwaved and heated up for some. Super easy, super fast. I hope all of you enjoy uh, the dishes. Of course, we couldn't uh, provide the rice, but all of you I'm sure have a rice cooker at home. You can enjoy this with some hot rice. Uh, this portion size here feeds two people or of course one really, really, really hungry person. Any questions out there? Well, thank you everyone. Thank you, Greg. My uh, pleasure. Chef Grant Sato, yummy, yummy food. And I hope you can smell it. I can't wait to taste them. But anyway, thank you very much. And I'll turn this floor over to our MC, Eric. All right, thank you again, uh, Chef Grant Sato. Uh, we really appreciate you making it so easy for us. I'm sure a lot of work went into making those kits so that we could take it home and make it uh, a lot easier for us to prepare. Um, I really can't wait to share this with my family and, and dig in and enjoy. So thank you very much for the demonstration. Um, I hope everyone is enjoying eating and snacking on what you all just made. And I hope you guys all uh, have a nice drink to go with it. Uh, go through the squares in our Zoom um gallery here and see say hi to your fellow crs's and other agents that may be in attendance today uh in this event with us of course we really wish that we were all in person enjoying this demonstration and i and accompany each other as we used to and i'm sure we all can't wait 
to do that again someday soon. So, okay, now we're gonna introduce our sponsors. And again, uh, we couldn't do any of our events and have this great participation um, without the help of all of our sponsors. So uh, First American Title and Guaranteed Rate will be speaking uh, about their company and, and some of the changes or, or pro programs that they offer right now. So I'm going to introduce first First American Title and Sonia Tarr will be jumping on our camera very shortly. Sonia. Hey, hi, everyone. Thank you, Erin, for that introduction. And uh, thank you. That was a great um, uh, cooking display to see. Can't wait to try it. Anyways, I just want to um, talk about um, First American and um, how we constantly strive to provide updated tech tools to better serve you um, and in in turn better serve your customers. So I'm sure by now you've all heard of our secure portal, which is very good for safety uh, because internet and wire fraud and uh, you know identity theft is on the rise. And of course, during these COVID times, we, uh, we wanna be um, as uh, contactless as, as possible. So Secure Portal allows you to do that and your customers to interact um, with um, Title and Escrow and you to be in the loop as well. Then also we have Zocom. We were the first in Hawaii to, first title company in Hawaii to bring Zocom to you. Um, they actually been uh, named top 50 for innovation um, in the Title and Escrow. They were named by, uh, let's see, who were they named by? Um, by Silicon Review Magazine as companies to watch. Um, so Zocom is earnest money deposit. It's a way to do it on your phone. So uh, when you open up escrow, your customers can use Zocom. And also we have our top multicultural resources, uh, which is available in 24 different languages. So this is there to help you send your customers there to watch videos or get explanations for anything that has to do with title, escrow, and real estate. So if you're interested in any of these tools or getting access to any of these tools, feel free to reach out to your favorite BDE and they'd be happy to help you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Sonia and First American Title for always being there for us and for sponsoring and sharing your always constantly changing for our benefit uh, programs that you offer. So thank you again for being here today. And up next, we are going to introduce Leonard Leventhal, who I'm sure all of you know from Guaranteed Rate. Welcome, Leonard. Good afternoon. Thank you, Aaron. Nice to see everybody. I don't have too much prepared this afternoon for you. I enjoyed watching the demonstration. I do not have any cooking skills. So any demonstration like that always impresses me tremendously. And maybe someday I can uh, jump in and learn how to cook. But for now, it's great to just sponsor these events, whether they be cooking classes or Zoom socials or CRS, uh, uh, CE classes or what have you. The main thing is that we're trying to be out in the front and be a source of mortgage expertise, of course, mortgage lending for any of your clients or yourself, uh, any kind of questions you may have. Please continue to think of us. We've got a large group now statewide. We're growing. We are, I believe, providing an excellent option to you because you do have choices out there. And we'll just do our best going forward the rest of the year and into next year um, to be the best possible mortgage resource that you can think of. So with that, I thank you guys again for allowing us to sponsor and support your events. We look forward to the next event or class, whatever is coming up, to be there to support all of you. So with that, I guess back to you, Aaron. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Leonard. And Guaranteed Rate, we always appreciate your support through the years. Um, and of course, again, if you guys have a chance, everyone in attendance, please uh, give Leonard Guaranteed Rate and First American Title a shot at some of your business because we couldn't do this without them. And up next, we're going to introduce. I'm going to introduce our president, Akino Hayakawa, to 
take over the rest of the portion of our program. Aquino? Aloha and welcome to our CRS Pauhana. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're enjoying yourself so far. I really enjoyed Chef Sato's presentation. I wish I can eat my mabo tofu, but I have to speak. So it's sitting over there in the kitchen and I hope I have some, I hope the girls leave some for me. And I have some brief announcements before we get into our networking and games. I hope you took advantage of CRS week this week. Being part of RRC is receiving great benefits like this, where we have free webinars that we had all week. And on the local level, we've had um, a team that works year round to provide the best education and networking events locally. And I'd like to introduce our volunteers, our past president, Patrick Graham, and then Aaron Tanganon, our communications and our MC for today. Raymond Kang for education. Raymond is the one who set up this whole Pauhana with Chef Grant Sato. So thank you very much, Raymond. We also have Roberta Wakisaka Velez, finance, Jocelyn Negronza for membership, and then our uh, regional vice president for Region 10, Arlene Kim Kawamoto. I would like to give a shout out to Trisha Nakoda, our past president. She is our national RRC incoming first vice president. Congratulations, Trisha. I cannot wait until you lead the way. Let's give these volunteers a virtual applause for their willingness to serve you. Thank you, everyone. Um, for CRS membership, most of you on this call, I believe have your CRS designation, but if you haven't, please know that you can become a member and then work towards your designation. And right now, the council is offering 50% discount off their membership until the end of the year. Or if you were previous CRS, but has made your membership relapse, the reinstatement fee is waived until the end of the year. The code is HIRRC21, so that's all you have to do. And then Crystal has dropped the membership link in the chat box. So when you join, you please just put the discount code. Moving on, um, I want to congratulate, congratulate four people who earned their CRS designation this year. We've got C. Capono Pa from Savio Realty on the Big Island. Congratulations. We have John Cam from Locations on Oahu. Congratulations, John. We also have Takashi Misawa from Hawaii Five-O Properties, also on Oahu. Congratulations. We have Kelsey Charles from Real Broker on Oahu as well. Congratulations. If you're here, can you please give us a wave? Or I can't see everyone, but let's give them all a round of applause. Congratulations. Oh, and real quickly, I'm wearing the Say Yes to CRS t-shirt. We have a store, a pop-up store, where you can buy t-shirts. We have it in white, gray, blue, and pink. And so Crystal will drop in the link later, but there are little things that you can wear to promote CRS. Next, I would like to talk about our upcoming events. We've got five exciting events. Their first one is the Mastermind 808. This is on October 6th, done by Karen Cardoza. She's gonna be talking about the eviction moratorium. So this is a free webinar, so please sign up to learn about what is happening. Karen is part of NARPA's Government Affairs Chair. So thank you, Karen, for volunteering to do this for us too. The second event coming up, is a chapter with a heart project. This is our Hawaii Food Bank drive and you can donate three different ways. You can donate by text or by calling and there is also an online link. So this is good until I believe October 8th. But if you can try to donate early, that would be great. 
and any donation, monetary donation would count. It can be $5, $20, whatever you feel comfortable, or you can feed a family for a week, a child for school lunch, you can choose there. It's very, very easy to do. Thank you so much. The third one is our RRC book club. So the next one is on October 12th. It's from eight to nine, it's on Zoom. And you can join by emailing our email address, crs at hawaiirealtors.com. And we are gonna be reading Never Split the Difference by Chris Voss. Chris Voss is a formal FBI negotiator. I personally have this book, I loved it. So I am joining this book club because I would like to share my insights as well. This is a great negotiation book. Um, we had our past instructor, Mark Givens, share that this is one of his favorite books as well. The next one is a chapter with a heart again, and this is done by our Maui CRS team. It's on October 16th. This is joining the fight for Alzheimer's for Survivor. And this one is a free event as well, and you can donate via link. So you don't have to be on Maui to participate. So you can be on the Big Island, Oahu, Kauai, Lanai, or, and you can just walk around your neighborhood. So details are in the chat box. And thank you, Joanne, for spearheading this. Finally, our course by Pat Zabi. This is Tax Strategies for the Real Estate Professional. This is a two-day course, October 25 and 26th. Uh, Check-in is at 7.30. And the course itself is from eight to 12. So it's a four hour course over the course of two days. So eight hours total. You get to earn eight CE credits and eight CRS credits. The cost is 125 for CRS members and 150 for guests. So Pat Zaby, I've heard him speak in person at Celebration. He is excellent. And tax strategies are important, especially towards the end of the year because you're gonna be planning for 2022 as well. And please stay around until the end of this course because we are actually giving away a few free seats to this course. This is very exciting. Okay, so we're gonna go into games. Aaron, I'd like to pass it back to you. All right, thank you very much, Aquino. Did I, I did, okay. And as you can see, we have a lot of things happening, a lot of courses and events you can participate in. And reminder, if you know somebody uh, in your office or in your company that could qualify to be our CRS designee, um, get them in, encourage them to join and take advantage of all the fun and educational things that we have in our organization. All right, now it's game time. As you see on our screen, um, you may want to turn your videos on for this, but keep your, keep your microphones muted for now. Uh, we're going to play some random games so that we can give away some of our great prizes. And I think we need to change the uh, display so that we can see everyone. Because, yeah, okay. To get ready for our one of our games. Okay, guys? All right, so game number one. Uh, we're giving away a bottle of wine. And it'll go to the first person to type in the chat box this answer. All right? Who is teaching the next? CRS Tax Strategies course. Go. Yay. I hope someone's monitoring that because it went so fast. Looks like Pat, I'm sorry, Cindy Seok. Uh, no. No, somebody first? It was Mary Bergier was the first one that came. Oh, uh, Mary Bergier? Yeah. Mary said, no, it was Brenda Pagano. Really? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. I'm letting you, you guys watch that, watch that back box because it's moving way too fast for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So who is it again? Brenda, congratulations for winning a bottle of wine. We will contact you and uh, get that to you as soon as possible so that you can enjoy it. Okay. So for game number two, we are giving away another bottle of wine and it'll go to the first person again to type in the chat box. So get your, your fingers ready. Uh, the first person who can name one of the new CRS graduates. Go. Oh. Okay. 
Okay, who, who got first on that one? We need Darryl, to ask Daryl. Okay, congratulations, <laughs> Daryl. I was hoping it was you because he's in the same company. So I, I'm sure you had that name already in your head. <laughs> congratulations, Daryl. All right, now our third prize in our third game. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the shared screen. Oh no, I'm gonna look at the shared <laughs> The first person to type in the chat box, the correct answer will win a bottle of wine and a book entitled Believe It by Jamie Kern Lima. And by the way, I wanted to thank Arlene Kim Kawamoto for donating the wine um, and the book as prizes. So thank you very much, Arlene. I believe it comes from her personal collection. Okay. So let's see, I don't see the question. But, oh, oh, here it is. Here's the game. All right, guys, so type in the chat box the answer to this Wheel of Fortune style question. I need an anger management. Who am I? And it's not me. The answer is not my name. Okay, it is a character on an old, really old cartoon. You guys can fill in the letters here. Yosemite has something to do with it. There you go. Let's see who had the first answer there in the chat box. I see Yi Vong. All right. Congratulations to Yi Vong. Thank you for participating. Uh, we loved watching you cook along with the chef, by the way. Thanks for having your camera on. Uh, it was very interactive. So you win a bottle of wine and the book entitled Believe It by Jamie, Jamie Kern Lima. And again, we'll contact all the winners and get them your prizes um, as soon as possible. Okay, now this is this last game. For all of you that have your cameras on, this is going to be a fun one. So it is a dance contest. And if you want to participate, make sure that you are in your screen on camera so that we can see everyone. Uh, we're gonna play some music and you just dance the best you can. Our judges will come up to an agreement and select the top three people and declare the top three as our winners. Uh, the prize for this one is a seat at our upcoming tax strategies course, which is a value of $150. Plus you can earn eight CE elective credits with that class. So give it your best shot. Give it your best moves and Crystal, cue the music. I'm going to play the music for about a minute. And our judges are Arlene Kim Kawamoto, Patrick Graham, and Roberta Wakisaka Filez. And they will be discussing after our minute of dancing who the three top people win the prize, a seat to the tax strategies course so if you're not rocking and rolling you're not going to be able to win so everybody stand up and get ready all right Darryl, come on daryl come on daryl matcha hold on hold on look at that look at our them we're just waiting for the music Mansani Leo Shiro. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Oh, I see people turned off their cameras. Come on, guys. <laughs> Is the music going? This is the fastest way to make $150. You dance for one minute and you get a $150 course. Like this is great ROI, everyone. Please turn on your cameras and let's dance. <laughs> I gotta ask Leonard now if I can use that um, winnings to uh, qualify that $150 you said, Aquino? Okay, Chris, so I think we're waiting for the music. We can't hear it on our side. Oh, that's <laughs> not good. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Hey, Sorry. BMW 12, dance in your car. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go.
Okay, judges, start calculating your All points. Right. Let's go, judges. Give it your best shot. That was a tough one. Everyone was getting into it. <laughs> so let's give us uh, give them just a half a minute to decide who the winners are. We give us a little bit longer than that. I gotta text everybody. <laughs> the pressure's on. The pressure's on. We're just waiting for the text message. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. To see what they decide. We should have that um, Jeopardy sound playing. <clears throat> okay, when we have our three names, Arlene will announce those winners. There must be a big debate. Yep. It sounds like it's a tough one. Everyone had so much fun. Discussing it. <clears throat> <laughs> Roberta and um, Arlene answered my text message. Sorry, guys. Okay, we're getting close. Technical difficulties. It was fully so Roberta oh, and I are together. Is, coming here. That, that is. This Wait, you're on mute. Yeah, we lost you. You're mute. So we have two votes on this side for the same person. So we're going to go with Mary. All right. Mary, Bajir. All right. One of our winners. We got two more. Two more. Two more, Arlene. Cindy. Oh, you guys cook. Oh, all right. Cindy Siok. Yes. She wrote in the chat. That's how they met her and her husband, apparently. So congratulations. To you both. And, and one more. <laughs> the couple in the Yi frame. The couple Who? in the Yi. Yi is the last name. Oh, Yi Vong. Yeah. No. Um, no? <laughs> Was there another Yi? Is it Yi? Y-E-E? -E? Yes, correct. So is it Yi Vong? For some reason, I can't get the uh, full screen. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. I have it. it Yi. Okay. okay, well, she's the winner today because awesome. she won two prizes. Woohoo! Great. Give you guys self a hand. That was awesome. All right, everyone. I hope you guys had a lot of fun. Um, Again, we, 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 really, uh, we really wish that we could all be together in person, um, having fun, giving high fives and celebrating together. Uh, thank you all for attending. I'm gonna give it right back to our president, Akino Hayakawa, to wrap it all up for us. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you everyone for participating and to all our winners. It was so nice, although it is virtual, that we can see your happy faces and dancing. This is a great way to end the week. And so thank you very much for attending our Pauhana today. I hope you had a great time. 
And thank you again to Chef Grant Sato for his cooking demonstration and our sponsors, First American Title and Guaranteed Rate. Thank you so much. We couldn't do this without you. And oh my God, I see food from Arlene's screen. That was a little bit, wow, that looks good. Um, so I hope to see you at our October 8th Mastermind 808. Until then, please be safe and enjoy your weekend. Thank you again. Thank you all. Thank Aloha. you. Have a great time. Thank you. Now we can eat. Yes, enjoy the yes, food. Now we can eat. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, good to see you guys. <laughs>